Hi there and welcome to a sizzling car cleaning guru video. As promised, I'm back with something slightly more colourful, this time in the shape of a red hot Honda Civic Type R, which I'll be giving a rinseless wash and wax on what was forecast to be the hottest day of the year so far, with temperatures set to peak at a heat stroke inducing 35 degrees. Ideal detailing conditions? Hardly, but then again with the hot hatch being kept at a large apartment complex with limited private parking and no outside access to power or running water, inconvenient car cleaning was the name of the game for this video, so the excessively warm weather actually played right into my how-to hands. Although at a glance the new Type R looked clean and presentable, upon closer inspection its various aggressively styled surfaces were covered in a light layer of summer soiling which needed safely removing without the use of the usual suds, hose pipe or pressure washer. The car had also recently returned from a premature trip to the body shop where its previously detailed Milano red paintwork had been treated to a complimentary swirly wash and not wanting to inflict any more imperfections I turned to one of the few proven products I know to be safe to use in these unfavourable conditions, optimum no rinse. Here I went with O&R's lime green wash and wax variant to give the car a little more pop than their standard blue concentrate but either would be suitable for giving a car in this state a rinseless wash. There are generally two different methods of washing your car with this product. One comprises of using a number of pre-soaked microfiber towels folded in such a manner that each gives you eight fresh cleaning surfaces to wash the various panels with. And although the thinking behind this is sound, I just don't personally feel comfortable washing a car down with towels and so opted for the second method, which is to use the normal two bucket technique in conjunction with a couple of soft synthetic wash mitts. The directions state to dilute the product using 1 ounce to 2 gallons of water, but having never been a stickler for the rules, I went with what I deemed to be a suitable amount of product for the level of dirt on the car, which probably equated to roughly 1 ounce per gallon instead. My thinking being I'd much rather deal with smears than swirls. After adding a controlled squirt into my 3 gallon bucket and letting the bright green concentrate disperse through the crystal clear water, I dumped my wash mitts in and gave them some time to soak while filling a small pump spray with a similar concentration of the product to prime the dirty surface with. And although this isn't necessary, it makes sense in hot conditions to help give a safer and potentially more thorough clean. Working from top to bottom as you would when washing a car normally, I pre-sprayed a section with the ONR. Let it sit for a moment to penetrate the dry surface dirt, and then gently washed it over. Before going straight on to dry in the area with one of a few box fresh microfiber towels. And the beauty of this product is that because you wash and dry a panel or section at a time instead of cleaning the whole car in one go, it can safely be used in the direct sun without risking it drying on the surface. In between sections the mitt was dropped into the fresh rinse bucket, thoroughly rubbed against the grit guard at the bottom, wrung out to prevent the wash bucket concentrate from becoming progressively diluted, then reloaded with the watery solution before going on to wash the next part of the car. While pre-spraying helps provide a safety barrier against swirls and marring in hot conditions like these, it will inevitably lead to previously clean parts becoming contaminated with light overspray, meaning you'll probably need to go back over these panels with a dry towel in order to obtain a decent finish. And as I thought it might, the O&R left some light smears in certain areas, and although I wasn't certain whether this was due to me using a stronger solution than recommended, or the extreme heat, a separate towel seemed to eliminate them just fine, but it did add to the process, which is worth bearing in mind if you're looking to save time by using a product like this. I buffed most areas over after drying to combat the smearing and while in a perfect world you'd save this until after everywhere had been washed and dried to reduce the chance of the buffing towel becoming contaminated from nearby dirty panels. In this heat I didn't want to let the unsightly waxy smears bake on the surface and potentially become difficult to remove later on. 
Washing a car in this way does look and feel completely counterintuitive as it appears as if you're cleaning it with just water, but the substantive polymers the product contains as well as various other wash product wizardry means that despite its lack of suds it still does a great job at safely soaking up the dirt particles, and in that respect is actually more advanced than a standard shampoo. The key to safely using a rinseless wash product is to work in a more gentle and considerate manner than you would with a bucket full of suds following a thorough pre-rinse. Slow down your movements a little, apply just enough pressure to prevent the mitt, sponge or towel from falling out of your hand and smoothly let it glide over the surface until you're satisfied the panel is visibly clean. Here for example, you'll notice I held the wash mitt instead of wearing it, as that allowed double the density of soft material to sit between my hand and the panel which helps reduce the pressure being exerted on the surface and hopefully the likelihood of swirls or mars being inflicted. It's entirely up to you how many wash implements you use, obviously the more you go with technically the safer the clean, yet so long as you properly scrub them out in the rinse bucket between sections you should be able to safely cover a third to half of a lightly soiled car before needing to swap. Here I use the first mitt to cover the flat facing panels and glass, moving on to the second for the sides and lower parts to keep things simple, which ultimately is what a product like this is all about. One of the major drawbacks of not having a hose pipe or pressure washer to hand is the depth of clean that can be achieved. The easily accessible flat panels may look nice and presentable here, but removing dirt from more intricate details like the various vents on this Type R, as well as dirt concealing badges and recessed shut lines can be difficult if you're to avoid excessive scrubbing, which is why you have to be realistic and accept that washing a car without running water is only going to be able to achieve a certain level of clean. Baked on bug splats are another area where rinseless wash products may not be able to cut it. Yes, they'll lift off with a bit of persistent rubbing, but if you want to keep the wash as swirl free as possible, that isn't an option. A stronger product could be applied to stubborn areas like these prior to washing, but that may serve to break up and compromise the performance of the optimum no rinse, so I wouldn't overcomplicate things. If the car's covered in stubborn contaminants like bugs, tar and baked on bear poo then it's probably too dirty to be tackled with one of these products. A big feature on this 300 brake horsepower beast is the rear diffuser designed to pull the car closer to the dirty road, and once again without the use of running water, soft brushes, heavier cleaners and suds, these areas just aren't going to be able to receive an adequate level of clean. This also illustrates why I generally wouldn't wash a car like this with towels, as these details are a real pain to get to. A plush mitt makes it slightly easier to access the accumulated dirt, however, without more potentially swirl causing scrubbing, the level of clean you can obtain on these areas with a rinseless wash product is always going to be a compromise. Once the body had been washed and dried, the Civic's door shuts were also attended to in the same manner, which actually proved to be a really quick and effective way of giving them a slightly more thorough clean than the standard towel dry they'd usually receive, and although properly cleaning a car's shut should normally be undertaken before washing the body, they were attended to last here to prevent the mitts and wash buckets from becoming too contaminated early on.
With the Type R's body and shuts attended to, it was time to give the gloss black pinstripe 19 inch wheels some love. Really, they needed a proper clean, but with no running water, the optimum no rinse was the only option. They were pre sprayed with the product, and a soft Swiss Fax wheel brush was used to gently work it into the lug nut recesses and faces of the Brembo brake calipers. before a mitt was used to gently access all other areas. To be honest, this was a bit of a nightmare, as the O&R wasn't really up to the job. I could have used it in conjunction with a wheel woolly or easy detail brush, but the product isn't designed to cut through heavy brake dust, so I just washed them off as best as I could to ensure they didn't let the side down, but as you can probably tell by the contamination on my poor mitt, it really wasn't pretty without the use of running water. Once dried off, the tyres were also dressed to finish the glossy look, but likewise with them not having been cleaned properly either, the applicator soon became caked in black gunk and made the process a lot less effective than if they'd received a hose pipe or pressure wash first. Still, each corner looked a whole lot better for it, I'm just glad I tackled them after the body as it was a filthy job. Finally, the car was given a thorough once over with a detailed spray and fresh buffing towel to eliminate any remaining smears and speckles of overspray. And although technically you shouldn't have to do this after using a rinseless wash product, I wanted to ensure the car looked as good as it possibly could without the use of running water for the all important aftershots. At the owner's request, I spritzed the red hot paintwork over with some Chemical Guys speed wipers, that's what it had been previously maintained with, although the optimum no rinse itself can also be used as an effective detail spray. I probably spent around 6 hours on the car in total which is absolutely ridiculous considering these types of products are designed to enable you to clean your car in a matter of minutes, however I essentially washed the car all over again off camera to ensure everywhere had seen a thorough going over, and as always filming it myself prolongs the process considerably so that's my excuse. In all honesty, cleaning a car in this manner really isn't my thing as any enjoyment and satisfaction is overshadowed by the worry about whether swirl marks are being inflicted paired with the frustration of having to overlook areas of deeper dirt. That isn't to say these products don't have their place though, optimum no rinse in particular is widely regarded by professionals and enthusiasts alike to be great for safely sprucing up lightly soiled cars without the need for a hose pipe or pressure washer. If you live in a flat or an apartment complex or are attending a show where properly washing your car with soap and running water just isn't an option, then it offers the means to conveniently clean your car to a satisfactory standard provided it's not too ingrained to begin with. 
It's all about understanding the product's strengths and limitations. Attempt to wash a filthy, neglected car with O&R and you and your paintwork are in for a tough time. Use it correctly, however, and you can save yourself a lot of hassle. In all honesty, would you really be able to tell the difference between this Type R and one that had received a proper wash and wax if they were side by side? I'm guessing not. As always, thanks for watching. I'll be back with your next fix of car cleaning content as soon as I possibly can be. But in the meantime, let me know what you think of this new breed of turbo Type R, as well as the results achieved on the car with no soap, running water or suds.